Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, another day here, day in social distancing number oblivion. I don't know what we're at anymore, but uh, right now the sun is shining. Hopefully it's shining where you are, and it's a beautiful morning, and um, God is good, even in the midst of, of the things that we go through, and challenges, and trials, and blessings, and Sorry, there's some weird noise here, but all, all the things that we go through, uh, God is still good. Today, I wanted to um, read from John chapter 11. It's a very familiar story to a lot of us who've been in church. And I want to do a bit of reading here today and just draw out uh, just a few things um, uh, that I think are good for us to understand, uh, and that God, in His viewpoint, sees a bigger picture than what we often see. Um, you know, we see what's in front of us, the challenge that's right in front of us, but God has such a bigger picture that he sees eternity. And, you know, what we're going through today might be very real and challenging and, and terrible for us today. Um, but when God sees eternity, you know, it's just a real, for us. And so I used to use the analogy of, 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 a, of a parade. Well, I'm sorry, this is the noise downstairs. This is a new noise for me. So, um, if we ever go to a parade, you know, we just see, if we're standing on the side of a road, we see right in, what's right in front of us. We don't see the whole parade. What's right in front of us might be the greatest float you've ever seen, amazing in all of its splendor and detail and, and whatever it is. Or it could be something that's not so impressive or a horse that just happens to be trotting by and lays a big dump right in front of you. <laughs> and all you can see, sorry for the image, but all you can see is that and it stinks and it's not so pleasant. But the reality is that's going to pass. And God's viewpoint is almost like in the helicopter of the parade and he sees the beginning from the end. So basically what's in front of you will pass is the idea, right? But anyways, John chapter 11, we're going to read a good portion of this. And it's the story of the death of Lazarus. Now it says here, uh, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and his sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured uh, perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. There's a principle that God allows certain things so that he can be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister uh, and Lazarus, and so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed, catch this, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. <laughs> Not that he loved them so much that he left immediately. He loved them so much that he actually just paused and waited a couple more days. We don't think, you know... Humanly speaking, that's not the way we would do things, right? Uh, Stay two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, uh, the Jews were there. They, they tried to stone you, and yet you were going back. And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, uh, for they have no, they have no light. So... You know, it's just a bit of a, an illustration, a metaphor. And after he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, of course, but the disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So when he told them play, plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. And then Thomas, also known as Didymus said to the rest of his disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, verse 17, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. He'd been dead for four days when they got there. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them and their loss of their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have not died, but I know now that, he, uh, sorry, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. It's like, Lord, if you'd only been here, like, where are you, God? You know, sometimes we have that sign. God, if you had only just showed up, I wouldn't be in this situation, right? Yeah. But the faith kicks in, but Lord, now I know 
that whatever you ask for, God will give you. So the faith kicks in. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know that he will rise again on the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. <laughs> you know, I'm above death. Get this, right? I'm above even this situation. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. And after she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And when the Jews who had been been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to mourn there. Hope you're still with me here. Um, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you'd only been here, again, here we go, Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would have not died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with, with her also weeping, He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And then we know the shortest verse in the Bible, verse 35 in John 11, Jesus wept. You see, he was deeply moved by their trouble, by their weeping. And Jesus wept as well. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And then some of them said, could not... Uh, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? These questions come up. Verse 38, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with the stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, Martha, uh, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he's been dead for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? It's a great question for us here today, whatever we're going through. If you would just believe, you will see the glory of God, Jesus says. We don't know what that looks like. We don't know if that means a physical raising of the dead or something else. But Jesus promises us, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So with that, they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I I knew that you always hear me, but... I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had heard this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, and his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. There's a lot of, a lot of things here, but there's a couple of things I just want to highlight here uh, today for us. Um, a few things that we got to know when we're going through some hard things. Um, Some of us have gone through hard things. Some of us in this room have gone through incredibly hard things, going through hard things. Um, Some of you watching have gone through and are going through incredibly hard things. The first thing I think that we need to understand when we're going through hard stuff is, number one, that Jesus loves us. He simply loves you. He loves you. Um... Jesus is moved by compassion over your situation. He sees your situation, and I believe that at times he weeps with us, just as he wept with the people in this story because of their grief and what they were going through. He identifies with that. And Jesus loves us, but he he encourages us to look beyond the circumstance to who he really is. Jesus says, I am the resurrection, that he will redeem all situations. You need to know that. No matter how bad they are, He will redeem them. He will do something in the midst of that. Romans 8, 35 to 39 says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. You know, nothing, not even death, not even, it says, neither height nor de- uh, neither death nor life nor angels or principalities or powers or things in the present or things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ. And we need to know that God loves us. And the reality is that God loves us so much that sometimes he allows some things uh, to happen in our lives so that we can grow, so that his glory can be revealed. We don't want to think about that, right? But we have to trust and believe today that, God, if you've allowed this to happen, 
that you're going to do something good. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to believe that you're forming something within me that would not be formed outside of this situation that I'm going through. Whether it's sickness, financial hardships, a flood, a pandemic, you know, it's not diminishing the, 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 the difficulty of it. I once read someone, Dean Morgan, he said this. He said, God's love for his own is not a pampering love. It is a perfecting love. The fact that he loves us and that we love him is no guarantee that we will be sheltered from the problems and pains in life. After all, the father loves his son, and yet the father permitted his beloved son to drink the cup of sorrow and experience the shame of, and pain of the cross. We must never think that love and suffering are incompatible. Certainly, they unite in Jesus Christ. And he allows us to go through some things, which brings us to the second point today, is that God always has a purpose, right? God loves us. We need to know that in our trials. But secondly, God always has a purpose. We may not understand it, just as we said, why we're having to go through these terrible things that God has allowed us to go through, but we need to believe today that God has a purpose, whatever it may be. Um, we read clearly that Jesus could have prevented Lazarus' sickness or even healed it and stopped it from resulting in death before, days before it happened. And then yet Jesus says, no, I'm glad that this is the way it's happened so that you will get to experience God's glory. Some of us have gone through some terrible things, and my belief and hope for you is that you're going to see an incredible outpouring of God's glory at the end of this. Hang in there, right? Some of us in this room, we've gone through some very difficult things. I'm believing you're going to see some incredible measures of God's glory in your life through it. Um, I believe that for you. We see that in the scriptures all over the place of people, incredible suffering. I think of Joseph, you know, incredible suffering and things that God had allowed him to go through, and yet he's seen incredible glory of God poured out on his life. You know, Job, in the same way, incredible suffering and pain. Even the things meant for evil, God can use for good. And I'm, I'm grateful for that today. And then lastly, God, we, you know, we have a trouble with this in our finite minds because we're human beings, and, you know, most of us will only live, you know, 80 years on this planet, give or take, right? But God is always on time. <laughs> His timing is not ours. And he may not show up when we think he should, but he will show up at the right time. And we see that in the scripture here, right? God, Jesus, if you'd only been here in time. Jesus, no, no, no. He works on a different time frame than us. Um, the same guy, Dean Morgan, says, Jesus lived on a divine timetable, <laughs> The fact that the man had been dead for four days gave greater authenticity to the miracle. How about that? It was God was glorified even more because of what we perceived as a delay in time. Greater opportunity for people to believe uh, because of the timing. So God's time does not always coincide uh, with our time. Um, and sometimes we actually prolong our difficulties because we want God to get out uh, get us out of our difficulties rather than through our difficulties. Sometimes, because we try to rush God, we try to make things happen. We try to, and you know, we were sharing a little bit of this on, uh, I think, Wednesday night, I think. Um, you know, I know in my life, when I've, when I've tried to rush ahead of God's timing and make things happen, it's actually caused more problems for me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's actually been detrimental to me. So we need to wait on God's timing. And... Uh, God holds time in his hand. And so today, you know, just a few points I wanted to leave with us today. God loves us when we're going through difficulties. We need to settle deep within our heart. If nothing else, we need to settle deep down that God loves you. Settle that in your soul today. He loves you. He loves you. And he cares for you. And he cares for all of us here today. You know, uh, that, that, that God has a purpose. How could God have a purpose in this? He has a purpose. Trust in it, even if you don't understand it. Pray. Maybe God will reveal to you the purpose. He can do that. But even if you don't understand it, just trust that he has a purpose. And then lastly, God, his timing is not always our timing. And he's working something out in his time. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to bring us to a place of, I believe, of, of, of perfection in him, that when we get to be with him, we will be like him. Amen? 
We will be like him. That's what he's doing in our lives to make us more like him. So anyways, I don't know. Hopefully that brings a little encouragement today. And um, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And uh, does any prayer requests come in on the feed here today? Can we pray for the Gonzalez family? Um, they lost their, their home in the fire. Now all of are again in the flood. Mm. But she just, she's also found out that her job is in jeopardy. Mm. So if we can pray against that. That's a load, yeah. To, yeah, which is a... What's the name? The Gon... Gonzal family. Gonzal? Okay. Gonzal, yeah. Um, I got a text yesterday. A family friend of ours who's been battling cancer for years. Not cancer-free, but now it's back to cancer-free. Hmm. Okay. Yes, and Joanne was sent me like this on Wednesday night for a request. Um, hmm. Yeah. Know, yeah. Cancer. Yeah. Also, many marriages are just not doing well. Yeah. And one yeah. lady just wrote me last night and said she's done. She's divorced and moving back to Ontario. Mm. And asked for prayer. And so, uh, a lot of abuse that goes on. Both mm. Things and families. And yeah. It's very hard stuff. Yeah. And th- these trying times don't make it any better. It just no. Just intensifies it all. Absolutely. Better. Yeah. So, for women and kids, you know, at home, it's going through difficult times. For men trying to provide for their families, you know, it's, like, it's pressure all the way around, right? Yeah. So, yeah. God will bring us out of it. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, amen. All right, let's go to prayer, everyone. Join with me. And uh, if you're watching, pray along with us. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today. And, and before, Lord, we, we, we cry out in these specifics. We want to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior, God, over every circumstance, God, that you are higher, you are above, Lord, you are beyond space and time, God, that you are just m- more mighty, you are supreme, God, over all creation, that everything is under your lordship and under your authority. And so, God, there's nothing too difficult for you. There is nothing, Lord, that's impossible for you. God, I've seen miracles happen. I've seen relationships restored that I thought had no hope. But, God, that you were able, Lord, to break through. God, I've seen physical things, diseases, Lord, that there was no hope. That, God, that you've come through and set free and healed. So, God, today we look to you as a God over everything, God. And even in our situations, sometimes they look bleak. Lord, they are dire. God, they are incredibly difficult. God, we go through some difficult things in this sin-filled earth, Lord, and full of uh, sometimes disease and troubles and circumstance. God, you said in this world that we will have troubles, but God, that we can take hope, Lord, and rejoice because, Lord, in you we can overcome the world. We can overcome all things, Lord, through faith in you. And so, Lord, today this is the God whom we look to, God, and we look at every situation today, and God, we our hearts are troubled, Lord, today, with, with those who are going through these things, for the Gonzal family. God, I can only begin to imagine having to deal with all of this, these things, Lord. And this is, to, Lord, it's easy to say these things. It's harder to live out, but God, our hearts are grieving and are crying out with them. God, would you come and strengthen them today? God, would you come and pour out your spirit today of strength and, and, and hope, Lord, into their lives, into their circumstances? God, may they experience right now the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, the living God pouring out upon their hearts and minds today. God, that they would be filled with hope today. God, that what is before them is not what always will be, that their hope, Lord, isn't in, Lord, what they can see, the temporal, Lord, their mortgages or their careers or their jobs or finances. But God, I pray today that they would just put their hope in you in a renewed way today. And God, that you would do miracles in their lives, oh God that you would come and do something, Lord, that would just blow them away, that, God, you are with them, that you would provide in their time of need, Lord. And, uh, and God, we pray for that over every circumstance that, that our, our church family, our city, which we're going through, a lot of people are going through some difficulties right now. And, God, that you would undertake, you would provide, Lord, uh, for all their needs today. May people recognize, God, that it's you who is our provider ultimately. And God, for those today who are struggling in, their, in sickness, and Lord, we have a gentleman named Harvey who's just been brought up, excuse me, in a couple names of, that Joanna has uh, shared with us on Wednesday night of people who have cancer. Uh, God, that you would just um, administer healing, Lord, that you would do miracles, God. 
We've just said nothing is too difficult for you. God, there's no sickness, no disease that's too difficult for you. So God, we pray for miracles in these situations that every cancer cell, Lord, would just be gone in Jesus' name, that the cells would go back to normal, Lord God, and whatever kind, kinds of cancers these are, God, there's nothing too difficult for you. So thank you, Jesus, uh, that you can bring healing to these people. And God, may it be a testimony, God, of your, of your greatness, God, of, of your might and, um, and your healing power. And so, God, we just pray for that today. And, and also, Lord, this request for marriages, um, yeah, my, I, I'm right there with Pastor Bevis. She brings this request, Lord, even as I know marriages that are struggling and people who are struggling and this, these uh, isolate, isolation times that we're in does not help, Lord, when we're sometimes all crammed in the house together and nowhere to go and can't get out of each other's space sometimes. And sometimes it makes it worse, oh God. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just help us, uh, Lord, those who are believers today, that we'd be full of the grace of God that we would have grace for one another. Lord, that we would have patience with one another. God, that we would have love for one another that goes beyond our human capacity to do it because, God, you have filled us with your grace and your love and your strength, God, that we can just uh, view others in that way. So, God, that you would do miracles in this time, God, in this family that Pastor Bev mentioned, that you would do miracles there. Lord, in the people that I know who are struggling, you would do miracles there. And, uh, and again, God, I believe that if we are full of your grace and your love, that we can uh, show others that same grace and love today, and that can help us in our marriages. And so, God, for all the families, Lord, who, in our church today who, who are home more than normal, who are in each other's faces more than normal, God, that you would just pour out your grace and your love to help us through this time. Lord, we will get through these things, I believe, Lord, as we walk with you. And we allow you to be Lord in our lives today. So, so God, we give all these things to you. There's many other things we could pray about today. I know there's many other needs, many other requests, even here in this room and certainly throughout the broadcast as we put it out there on the web. But, God, thank you today that you are in control. Lord, that you are the one who sees the beginning and the end. Lord, we said earlier that you are the, uh, the person in the helicopter seeing the parade, the, the beginning and the end, God. You know all things. So God, today, that's the God whom we put our trust in. Um, God, you work all things out for your good and for our good. And so God, we trust in that today. We love you today, God. Um, just bless everyone who's watching this today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll uh, catch you tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye.